Lee Stalker <laughs> from Summercrest. Let's get into uh, effective communication. You know, you and I were talking about this before, how we are great communicators. We are. We always have a really nice conversation that offers information, but is also, I believe, entertaining to listen to. I'd, I'd like to think so. <laughs> I mean, we, we strive for the entertainment <laughs> aspect. So, uh, But in this particular case, we're talking about effective communication with people with moderate to severe dementia. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking a lot about dementia lately, and it's obviously an important subject. More and more people in our society are going to be affected by it one way or another. So it's important that if and when you are affected by it, you know how to manage it. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the ways is actually really actually recognizing that there's a problem. That's recognizing that that person has dementia. Don't keep thinking and trying to make that person the person you knew of yesteryear. Is that the right mm -hmm. word for that? <laughs> yeah, you've, you've mentioned that a couple of times that mm -hmm. the person is not the same person, mm -hmm. that, they, that they're, they're changing, the brain is changing, the brain chemistry is changing. So they are, in essence, a, a, a different person, mm -hmm. in, you know, from a, from a mental faculties. Standpoint. Right. But it's so hard to actually recognize that because when we look at somebody, we see the same person that we've known forever. And, and many times with people who have dementia, especially, you know, maybe uh, in the beginning or whether it's moderate or not, physically, they can be very, very able and capable and nothing looks like it's changed physically. So it is obviously something that's going on changing in the brain. But it's hard to look at somebody who's completely physically capable and realize that there's a problem. What we're used to is if somebody is ill, we see it. Mm -hmm. And in dementia, you don't always see it for a while. So first of all, recognizing that there's the problem and treating the person appropriately, depending on where they are in the course of their disease. Mm -hmm. um, so another thing, you know, is avoiding distractions. It's really important when you're talking to somebody with dementia to pay attention to them, you know, maintain eye contact. What, what, I'm sorry, what were you saying? I wasn't paying attention. No. <laughs> Here comes your early well, onset. No, that's my ADHD. That's, that's the problem. <laughs> Call so. it what you will. Yeah. <laughs> But taking the person out of a situation where there's a lot going on and having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them can be really important and it's going to make that conversation more important. You know, I was doing some research on this and um, I, I pulled up an article that, that had some, some tips on effective communication uh, with people who are living with moderate to severe dementia. And one of the things that jumped out at me right away was the speaking clearly and naturally in a warm tone. But here was the thing, avoiding baby talk. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I actually heard a gentleman one day in a restaurant call a server out because she was like, and would you like baked beans with that? Or would you like, and, <laughs> he, and he's like, and he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm 82 years old and I'm fairly cogent and lucid. You don't have to talk to me like, a, and I mean, yeah. he was genuinely upset because mm -hmm. we have this tendency, especially when we're dealing with older people to get into that, that it's kind of that baby talk. And we talk to them like this. And I mean, yeah, I get it. I mean, I get it. You know, the, the, the full circle of life, you come into the world in diapers, you leave the world in diapers. I get that. <laughs> but the baby talk is something that they really take offense to. It's condescending and it's condescending to somebody who is lucid and it's condescending to somebody who's not. There's a certain feeling about dementia. You can get a vibe from somebody and you get the vibe from when they're speaking to you like you are less of an adult because your mental capacity is lessened. And that can really raise somebody's defenses. And um, when you have somebody with dementia whose, you know, their defenses are getting raised, they're likely going to act out in some sort of behavior that you're not wanting to deal with. Let me ask you this. I'm I'm just curious about this. You know, it, it's often been asked, are people who are, and I'm not making the comparison between dementia and insanity, but it's often been asked, when people are insane, do they know it? And the question that I have is, is a person who is suffering from dementia, are they self-aware of their mental deterioration or is part of the dementia not having the awareness that there's a problem? In the beginning, they're definitely self-aware. And I, you know, working with the senior population, I see it all the time. And people who are in our, you know, assisted living, some people have a touch of dementia. Um, and they've said to me, I know I'm losing my mind or I know that I'm not able to think clearly and find the words that I once was. Um, and so in the beginning, people definitely and even moderately can recognize that this is happening to them. It's pretty scary. So don't take away somebody's dignity by talking to them like they're a child. We don't call residents honey or sweetie or dear. We call them by their names because mm -hmm. they are adults and that's who they are. They're not my honey or my sweetie. And so I, I sometimes cringe if I hear that out in public. Well, now sometimes if I hear it in public, I always cringe. So it's important to always- You haven't been down in Georgia respect. recently, have you? 
No. They will. Everybody in Georgia calls you sweetie, honey. Well, I was down in Georgia during my training for a week. That's part of a there, lifestyle. And everybody down there, how you doing, sweetie? How you doing, honey? I'm like, well, everybody's so friendly down there. Yeah, you're like, really hey, nice. guess what? I'm from New England. <laughs> don't <laughs> I, know know I don't admit that, though. Like, oh, you're already Yankee, huh? No, she's like, I'm going to get strung up here. Yeah. Uh, here come the villagers with the pitchforks and torches. Well, but, there is a difference in the way you treat people depending where you come from in the United yeah. States. But the important thing is to treat somebody as you've treated them in the past. I'm going to, I have this list that uh, you had sent over to me, mm -hmm. uh, the 10 tips. Um, so I'm going to put that up on the Facebook page because there's some really, really good information in here. And it's, I mean, it's just simple stuff that I think, you know, oftentimes in the totality of the circumstances, it can be difficult to, to try to really map out um, a, a, a strategy in, in how to communicate. But uh, I mean, some really important stuff, nonverbal cues, for instance, um, just maintaining eye contact and smiling and just, you know, e even if it's nonverbal, still that smile and those mm -hmm. comforting and assuaging nonverbal cues. It certainly can be it gives really people important. a feeling of relaxation and comfort when you can look at them in the eye, smile, hold their hand, things of that nature. The nonverbal communication is extremely important. You know, one of the other ones too that was really interesting is uh, you know, don't quibble. Um, this this was interesting. Conversations are not likely to go far if you try to correct every inaccurate statement. <laughs> Understand that a person who is living with advanced uh, either either intermediate or advanced dementia, they're going to get things wrong. Just let it go. You, <laughs> yeah. that, that's not the time to assert yourself. Do you got to figure out what's important? Is it important to be right all the time? For you, maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> as you know me so well. <laughs> but depending, you know, in a circumstance like this, it, being right, it's nothing. You don't need to be right. That, that's why I avoid it, discussing politics and the with, senior with assisted with living. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I'm not going to win. You know? Yeah, it'd be, I think it's, you know, we really do have to change the way we think so that we can go into that person world because they're not going to be able to change the way they are and the way they are thinking to come into ours. So it's important to make a plan, review the tips for effective communication. That way you're not caught off guard when you're dealing with somebody with dementia and dementia behaviors. All right. Like I said, I'm going to put this uh, this li uh, this list, not a link, it's a list up on the uh, WNTK Facebook page. Check that out at facebook.com slash WNTK radio. And I got to just, I was just thinking about this. I'm like, Peter Burling's getting up there in age sooner or later. You know, he may lose his mind. 863-8181. Peter, they got an open spot for you down there. Good news, my friend. Summercrest.net is the website. Again, www.summercrest.net, a senior assisted living community in beautiful Newport. And uh, Lee Stocker, the marketing director for Summercrest, 169 Summer Street in Newport. Swing on by, unannounced. They love that. And uh, you can give them a call at 603-863-8181. You can uh, arrange a tour or give uh, email or give Give Lee an e I'm losing my mind. The there effective we go. communication is not rubbing off on you. No, please, please don't try to correct me and don't no baby talk. Lstalker at summercrest.net is the uh, email. Lstalker at summercrest.net. Lee, it is always a pleasure. Thank you.